ਰਸ਼ੀਆ ਤੇ ਯੂਕਰੇਨ ਦੇ ਦਰਮਿਆਨ ਭਿਆਨਕ ਜੰਗ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਜੰਗ ਦੇ ਦਿਨ ਵੱਧ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਉਵੇਂ ਉਵੇਂ ਮੌਤਾਂ ਦੀ ਗਿਣਤੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਜ਼ਾਫਾ ਵੀ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਯੂਕਰੇਨ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਦਾਵਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਕਈ ਰਿਹਾਇਸ਼ੀ ਇਲਾਕਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਰੂਸ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਗੋਲੀਬਾਰੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਗਈ ਹਮਲਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਜਿਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ 40 ਲੋਕਾਂ ਦੀ ਮੌਤ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਰਾਸ਼ਟਰਪਤੀ ਵਲੋਦਮੀਰ ਜ਼ੈਲੈਂਸਕੀ ਨੇ ਮੰਗ ਕੀਤੀ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਯੂਕਰੇਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਨੋ ਫਲਾਈਂਗ ਜ਼ੋਨ ਐਲਾਨਿਆ ਜਾਏ ਪਰ ਨਾਟੋ ਨੇ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਇਨਕਾਰ ਕਰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੈ ਹਾਲਾਂਕਿ ਲਗਾਤਾਰ ਦਾਅਵੇ ਹੋ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਮਦਦ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਭੇਜੀ ਜਾ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਭੇਜੀ ਜਾਏਗੀ ਨਾਲ ਹੀ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਕੀ ਦਾਅਵੇ ਕੀਤੇ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਯੂਕਰੇਨ ਦੀ ਮਦਦ ਦੇ ਬਾਬਤ ਸੁਣਦੇ ਹਾਂ The Ukrainian people and government continue to show remarkable courage uh, in defending their country, defending their freedom, defending one another. We said that if President Putin invaded Ukraine, we would increase our support for Ukraine's ability to defend itself while imposing swift and severe costs on the Kremlin. That's exactly what the United States and our allies and partners are doing. That was the focus of our, our ministerial meetings today uh, with NATO allies. As recently as a few weeks ago, some questioned whether uh, if the regional or international rules-based order came under threat, uh, whether our European allies and partners would be willing to shoulder their fair share of the burden, the risk, the cost to defend it. In the last 9 days, European countries have demonstrated they are more than ready to stand up and stand together. And the United States is standing with Europe, pursuing complementary actions and policies in close coordination with our allies and partners. Russia has never been so isolated. We have never been more united. But let me reiterate one thing because it's very important. We take these actions not because we oppose the Russian people. We do not. We regret that tens of millions of Russians will suffer because of the dangerous decisions made by a tiny circle of corrupt leaders and their cronies who have consistently put their interests above those of the Russian people. who are doing everything they can to hide their war of choice from the Russian public. Today's discussion with NATO, the EU, the G7 affirmed that we're fully aligned on our goals and our determination to meet them. We'll deepen our support for Ukraine's brave defenders and for the Ukrainian civilians suffering as a result of the deepening humanitarian crisis. We'll continue to raise the cost for President Putin and all who carry out and enable his war of choice and the devastation that it's causing. We'll continue to strengthen our capacity to defend our collective security and deter further escalation by Russia, including by upholding our Article 5 commitment that an attack on one is an attack on all. NATO's a defensive alliance. We've never sought and will not seek conflict with Russia. But as President Biden has said, we will defend every inch of NATO territory. No one should doubt America's readiness or our resolve. At the same time, we'll keep open the door to dialogue and diplomacy. while making clear to the kremlin that unless it changes course it will continue down the road of increasing isolation and economic pain and will support ukraine in its talks with russia to reach a ceasefire and the unconditional withdrawal of russian forces something that foreign minister kaleba and i have been discussing on a daily basis in the meantime we are working urgently with the government of ukraine the icrc and others to create humanitarian corridors that will allow civilians to get out of ukraine's besieged cities and to allow food, medicine and other vital supplies to get in. Uh, Russia's attack created this humanitarian crisis. Now all countries have a responsibility to pressure the Kremlin to alleviate at least some of the misery that it has wrought. Duniya de kai mulk Ukraine di madad kar rahe ne te naal hi Rus nu sabak sikhon de layi pabandiyan vi laiyan gaiyan ne ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਖਾਸ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਕਈ ਬੰਦਿਸ਼ਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਰੂਸ ਤੇ ਲਾ ਦਿੱਤੀਆਂ ਗਈਆਂ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਦਾਵਾ ਕੀਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਰੂਸ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਵੱਡੀ ਆਰਥਿਕ ਸੱਟ ਵੱਜ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਆਦਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਅਪਰੋਚਿੰਗ ਐਨੀ ਆਫ ਦ ਸਟੈਪਸ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਟੇਕਨ ਐਸ ਇਟ ਰਿਲੇਟਸ ਟੂ ਰਸ਼ੀਆ ਐਂਡ ਦੀ ਐਕਸ਼ਨਸ ਆਫ ਰਸ਼ੀਆ ਐਂਡ ਹੋਲਡਿੰਗ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਪੁਟਿਨ ਅਕਾਊਂਟੇਬਲ ਇਸ ਟੂ ਟੇਕ ਐਵਰੀ ਸਟੈਪ ਟੂ ਦਾ ਮੈਕਸਿਮਮ ਇੰਪੈਕਟ ਦੈਟ ਵਿਲ ਇੰਪੈਕਟ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਪੁਟਿਨ ਦ ਰਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਇਕਨੋਮੀ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਦ ਸਟਾਕ ਮਾਰਕੀਟ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਕਲੋਜ਼ਡ ਨਾਓ ਫੋਰ ਦ ਲੌਂਗੈਸਟ ਟਾਈਮ ਇਨ ਹਿਸਟਰੀ ਰਸ਼ੀਆ ਇਜ਼ ਇਨ ਅ ਫੁੱਲ ਬਲੋਨ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਿਸ ਅਕੋਰਡਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਜੇਪੀ ਮੋਰਗਨ ਐਨਾਲਿਸਟ ਥੇਰ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਅ ਕੋਲਾਪਸ ਇਨ ਦ ਰਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਜੀਡੀਪੀ ਸੋ ਕਲੀਅਰਲੀ ਥੋਸ ਐਕਸ਼ਨਸ ਆਰ ਵਰਕਿੰਗ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਹੈਵ ਹੈਵ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਹਿਸ ਪ੍ਰਿੰਸੀਪਲਸ ਫਰਮ ਦ ਬਿਗਿਨਿੰਗ ਹੈਜ਼ ਬੀਨ ਟੂ ਡੂ ਥੈਟ ਇਨ ਅ ਯੂਨੀਫਾਈਡ ਵੇ ਇਨ ਅ ਕੋਆਰਡੀਨੇਟਿਡ ਵੇ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਸਟਰੋਂਗਰ ਇਫ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਟੁਗੇਦਰ ਐਸ ਵੀ ਵਰਕ ਵਿਦ ਦ ਯੂਰੋਪੀਅਨਸ ਥੇਰਡ ਪ੍ਰਿੰਸੀਪਲ ਆਰ ਅਨਦਰ ਪ੍ਰਿੰਸੀਪ
uh, while we're maximizing the impact to minimize it on the American people, on uh, the global markets, on uh, and, and certainly we are mindful as we look at all of these options of, of uh, making sure we're not having that impact. So we want to maintain, as, as Dr. Rouse said, a steady global supply of energy uh, with whatever actions we take on COVID-19 response. Uh, while we now have tools like vaccines, treatments, tests, and high-quality masks to protect people, we are looking at options we could take right now to cut U.S. consumption of Russian energy, but we are very focused on minimizing the impact to families. If you reduce supply in the global marketplace, you are going to rise, raise gas prices. You're going to ra ra the, raise the price of uh, oil, and that is something the President is very mindful of and focused on. The reason why the price of gas is going up is not because of steps the President President has taken. They are because President Putin is invading Ukraine. Well, we have an internal review that's been ongoing uh, prior to last night of uh, to collect evidence and data of uh, of the targeting of civilians, of the reported use of uh, horrific weapons of war uh, on the ground in Ukraine. Uh, that's an ongoing process. We have not made conclusions. It's a legal review and a process that goes through the administration. What I will say is that. Uh, the intentional targeting of civilians or civilian objects would be considered a war, war crime, even as we are assessing that. Uh, regardless of the legality, uh, this action was the height of irresponsibility. The Kremlin must cease operations uh, around nuclear infrastructure, and we have, of course, remaining concerns. I would note that just on the um, in, in the developments that have happened overnight as it relates to the nuclear uh, power plant, I mean, obviously, the Russian government's actions were extremely reckless and dangerous. Uh, they could have posed a profound threat uh, to the safety of civilians in the region and beyond. We do applaud the ability of the Ukrainian operators to keep all six reactors in safe conditions while under attack and to report as they were able to uh, to the nuclear regulator, which certainly was helpful. As you know, last night the president not only spoke with President Zelensky, he also uh, spoke last night to the head of the uh, National Nuclear Security Administration uh, for an update on the situation at the plant. Um, so that is a, a piece of positive news uh, for the moment. Uh, but uh, we remain concerned, of course, about uh, the fact that they have uh, clearly taken control of the plants, or it, it appears so, the Russian military has. The best step for nuclear safety would be for Russia to immediately withdraw its, its uh, forces around the facility. Russian leadership taking that, that effort seriously would be would be uh, something we would welcome. At the end of the break, we will see that Russia has been able to use the Ukraine Permanent Center to the world. And रूस ने वल्लो यूक्रेन देवेच यूरोप दे सब तो वड़े न्यूक्लियर सेंटर ते हमला कीता गया जिसो बाद राष्ट्रपति जलंस्की ने क्या कि जेकर यूक्रेन तबाह हुंदे ता पूरा यूरोप तबाह हो जाएगा सवाल खड़े कीते गए ते नाली मदद दी गोहार वी लाई गई हालाकि हुन अमरीका दे विच पेंटागन तो जवाब दिता गया रूस नु क्या गया कि इस तरह दे हमले बर्दाश्त नहीं कीते जानगे it is basically a, a, a phone line, a phone connection to the Russian Ministry of Defense. It, it is being administered out of European Command headquarters. Um, and as, as I understand it, it it's, uh, it's basically staffed by, uh, you know, staff level officers there at European Command. Um, uh, I have no expectation that, uh, unless he really desires that the General Walters would would be the one managing that. It's not at that level. It's at a it's at a, a lower operational level, um, and it's being um, administered as a bilateral U.S. to Russia deconfliction channel. Uh, we think it's valuable to have a direct communication vehicle at that level, at an operational level, uh, to to reduce the risks of of miscalculation um, and to be able to communicate in real time if, if need be, particularly because now the airspace over Ukraine is contested uh, by, by both uh, Russian and, uh, and Ukrainian aircraft. Uh, so that, that contested airspace now buttresses right up against NATO. This underscores the recklessness with which the Russians have been perpetrating this unprovoked invasion and assault on Ukraine and their sovereignty. Um, uh, attacking a nuclear power plant is exceedingly dangerous uh, and uh, could have visited uh, 
a lot more damage and destruction to the people of Ukraine and to the, uh, and, and perhaps even in, uh, to, to neighboring countries. Um, uh, ha had this gone a different way, it makes eminent sense for us to be able to have some way uh, of of communicating with the Russians. Should uh, operations uh, in that contested airspace um, uh, pose any kind of a threat or even just pose a concern to the alliance or to the United States. We want to be able to have a way of, of speaking directly at an operational level with the Russian Ministry of Defense. So it makes a lot of sense to do this. We do believe that, that the actions by the Ukrainians have in fact stalled that convoy and certainly slowed it down, uh, stopped it in some places. Uh, but we also think that, uh, you know, that it, it's also a, of a piece of Russian challenges that they've had just in terms of their own physical ground movement, sustainment, logistics. They're running out of fuel. They're, we still believe that in, in some cases they're running out of food for their soldiers. So they've also been plagued by their own missteps and stumbles. The Ukrainian air forces continue to fly. They still have air and missile defense available to them. They are using them uh, and using them quite effectively. And the way they have marshaled their resources and applied them uh, to the fight in the air has been quite extraordinary. The Russians likewise have a lot of aircraft available to them, as well as uh, uh, missiles. They have fired over 500 since the beginning uh, of this uh, of this invasion. Uh, so that's what makes this airspace. Uh, that's what makes it so contested. Quite frankly, there's a lot of hardware flying around in that airspace, and it literally changes throughout a given day based on what the Russians are doing and how the Ukrainians are trying to resist what the Russians are doing. Um, and it's because it's so dynamic and so contested that, again, we felt it was important to have a deconfliction mechanism. Clearly, uh, the international community does not want to see another incident such as what we saw last night, um, which could potentially just escalate the level of violence and destruction in Ukraine uh, to a level that, uh, uh, that, that is and should be unacceptable, even to the Russians. But I can't speak to their intentions with respect to other uh, nuclear power plants. Um, and as for food, food and fuel, again, our general assessment today is that they are still struggling with logistics challenges to include food for their troops and fuel for their, uh, for their vehicles. We do not believe they have overcome that. यूक्रेन तो जो प्यानक तस्वीर आ रही ने वो पूरी दुनिया देख रही है कि किमें इमारत तहस नहस हो गई ने रोंद कुरलाते लोग देश छड़ना चाहते हैं पर इस जंग के दरमियान रूस के वलों जो हथियार वरते जा रहे हैं जो बॉम्ब इस्तेमाल किए जा रहे हैं उन्होंने की है एतराज क्यों चुके जा रहे हैं सवाल क्यों इन बॉम्ब से लगी हुई है पाबंदी दसद ब्रेक दस पार रूस के वलों जिस तरह के नूक्रेन से हमला किया जा रहा है उसकी चौतरफा निंदा भी हो रही है खास करके नैटो के वलों आख्या गया कि यूक्रेन से हमला कर रूस जो वैक्यूम और कलस्टर बॉम्ब का इस्तेमाल कर रहा है उस पर बैन लग्या हो रूस को इस तरह के हमलों का खामियाजा भुगतना पेगा Uh, use of other uh, types of weapons will be, which will be in, in, uh, in violation of international law. And of course, NATO and uh, NATO allies and partners are uh, collecting information and monitoring very closely what is going on in Ukraine. I would also welcome the decision by the International Criminal Court to open an investigation into this, uh, because uh, we have to make sure that President Putin and the President of Belarus are held accountable for what they do. This is, this is brutality, this is inhumane, and this is violating international law. And we also may have to make sure that the International Criminal Court really looks into this. And that's the reason why I welcome the decision by the International Criminal Court. Well, look, this is the, this is the third Foreign Affairs Council we've had in a week. Uh, and I expect we'll have another one in the next few days. Um, we're not signing off on a new package of sanctions today, but that's clearly underway and I suspect uh, will be agreed in the early days of next week. Today really I think is about a, uh, a show of unity and engagement uh, that involves the EU, the US, Canada and the UK. Uh, and I think it's really about sending a very clear message to the world that 
uh, that we in the European Union and, uh, and other partners uh, are really disgusted and outraged by, by what we continue to see day after day uh, in, in Ukraine. I'm here with the EU, with the US, with the Canada and with Ukraine to show our unity and support after the appalling invasion by Putin into Ukraine. It's vitally important that we put the toughest possible sanctions on. We want to see more. But do we, all, we do all we can to support the Ukrainian people at this very difficult time and that we show complete unity. It is a pleasure for me to be invited by the High Representative of the EU, Joseph Borrell. Uh, Representative Borrell and us have been working extensively in the recent weeks on the question of the further invasion of Russia, uh, of Ukraine by Russia. Um, for us, it is important to be here because we have worked a lot within the G7, but we want also to make sure that the transatlantic partnership we have is also reflected within the EU. Canada has a very strong relationship with many European countries, with the EU itself, and we're also very good friends to the Americans. We're that country that bridge both realities of North America and Europe. And so that's why it is important for us to be here, to have this conversation, and our goal is to make sure that we put maximum pressure on Russia. At Rukde Church, a break delay, but break those parts of Sangeke, UK, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson, ne is junk bare kike. नेटो वलो यूक्रेन दे लेई मदद पेजी जा रही है, हाला की लड़ाई लड़न दे लेई फौजां ता नहीं पेजियां जा रही है, पर दावा कीता जा रही है, के संगर्ष दे लेई नेटो पूरी तरह दे नाल त्यार है, नाली जो यूके दे प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने बोरिस जॉनसन उन्होंने भी कहा कि हर हाल दे विच यूके यूक्रेन दे लोकां दे नाल खड़े है Imagine what you're living through right now or the outrage and heartbreak you must feel as everything you know and love is so inexplicably and brutally shattered What's happening in your homeland is an abomination. And like people across the UK, I am heartsick at the destruction and loss of life. On Wednesday, MPs in our House of Commons stood to applaud the Ukrainian ambassador and to demonstrate that the whole of the UK stands squarely with the people of Ukraine and your awe-inspiring struggle against this aggression. Together with Ukraine's many friends, we're doing everything we can to support you and to impose a mountain of pressure on Vladimir Putin. We're working with more than 25 allies and partners from as far away as Australia to support those engaged in the battle, not only to protect their homes, but freedom and democracy itself. With the US and the European Union, we've brought in the biggest package of global sanctions ever imposed on Russia, and we will go further unless and until this aggression stops. The world is turning its back on Putin and his regime. Global corporations are severing ties with Russia, participation in sporting events is being cancelled, and nation after nation is taking a stand. The vice is tightening its grip and it will continue to tighten. To those Ukrainians here in the UK who I know are desperately worried about family and friends, I can tell you we're doing everything we can to help those fleeing the conflict. If you are a Ukrainian in the UK, we've made it easier for you to bring over family members through the Ukrainian family scheme. On Tuesday, I announced there will be a new humanitarian sponsorship route. And we're matching the donations you make through the Disasters Emergency Committee Ukraine Appeal, starting with £20 million, alongside the hundreds of millions we're providing in humanitarian aid. Putin has made a grave miscalculation. The free world is united in its resolve to stand up 
to his barbarism and the fortitude and defiance of the Ukrainian people in the face of this unjust and unwarranted aggression is moving hearts around the world. I've spoken almost every day to President Volodymyr Zelensky and I marvel at his bravery, his calm, his sense of purpose, just as I marvel at the heroism and resolve of the Ukrainian people. And I know that however long it takes, however arduous, Putin must fail. Our thoughts and, and our sympathies are with the whole of Ukraine in its battle for freedom. ਸਾਡੀ ਇਸ ਖਾਸ ਪੇਸ਼ਕਸ਼ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਫਿਲਹਾਲ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਐਨਾ ਹੀ ਪਰ ਪੂਰਾ ਦਿਨ ਯੂਕਰੇਨ ਅਤੇ ਰਸ਼ੀਆ ਦੀ ਜੰਗ ਦੀ ਹਰ ਵੱਡੀ ਅਪਡੇਟ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਦੇਖਣ ਨੂੰ ਮ